severe weather knows no boundaries. It can hit any of us at any time. Over the past decade, 90% of all natural disasters have been caused by hazards such as floods, droughts and storms. In 2005, catastrophic floods in India killed over a thousand people and made millions homeless. Just weeks later, a record number of hurricanes slammed into the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, leaving devastation in their wake. Apart from the human tragedy of such disasters, the costs of repair and recovery are a huge burden, diverting precious resources from social and economic development. Signs are that worse may be in store. Changing global weather patterns could result in more severe and more frequent natural hazards, from sudden extremes like severe storms to the creeping menace of drought. Hazards which have devastating effects on food production, as well as on lives and property. Reducing the risk of natural disasters is at the core of the World Meteorological Organization's mission and of its 187 member National Meteorological and Hydrological Services. The Met Services use the latest technology to gather and share data on short and long-term hazards, information which is critical if we are to prepare for the challenges that nature may deliver. The cost of these disasters in terms of human lives is still huge. Over an average decade, more than 500,000 people still lose their lives because of such disasters. The economic cost is over five to six hundred billion dollars per decade, and more than two billion people are affected by these disasters. So this is absolutely a huge impact. And what is important to also realize is that the cost of these disasters, both human and economic, falls disproportionately upon the least developed countries. In 2005, millions of people in the Horn of Africa faced food shortages brought on by years of little or no rain. Drought is a growing scourge in many parts of the world. In South Africa, a recent three-year-long drought turned these fertile slopes to baked earth. In such conditions, crops cannot be planted. Livestock starves. Subsistence farming is the norm here in the Eastern Cape province, but the poorest and most vulnerable people are those least able to withstand the slow onslaught of drought. When there is no rain, we go hungry. Here in the old Transkei, this is how we live. We get our money by selling our produce in town. There was a very bad drought three years ago. There was nothing good planted in any of these fields. We had to ration our food, the whole village. The main two weather hazards in South Africa are floods and droughts and they do have a negative impacts on our poor community that are living in substandard areas and our farmers, moreover the agricultural sector, which contribute enormous to the uh, uh, economy of our country. But floods and drought can be predicted. By collecting data over long periods, meteorological services can detect patterns indicating extremes of weather, including drought, up to three months ahead. To improve forecasting quality, the South African Weather Service has recently increased the number of weather stations gathering and recording data all over the country. This semi-automatic weather station in a remote corner of the Eastern Cape sends back information every five minutes, 24 hours a day. Information which is complemented by trained local observers. The Weather Service has also added to its network of 11 radar installations, which provide real-time information on developing weather patterns. 
this data is fed into national and international telecommunications networks and shared with neighboring countries to track the development of severe storms and tornadoes, a particular hazard in this region. The Eastern Cape is susceptible to a variety of weather conditions ranging from very dry conditions to particularly wet conditions. And during these uh, regimes where it is very dry and we are suffering from droughts, we still have severe storms. What complicates the matter during these uh, periods is that during the drought era, we have a lot of runoff and severe storms can potentially create a lot of damage. This radar installation is particularly important to monitor any development of severe storms during those periods. Hey, stay close to your radio. That's you, said FM 97.0. Causing heavy rainfalls over the northeastern parts of the country. Hence, flooding is expected so over some areas. And people are advised to remain indoors and in safe places as the winds can really Getting severe weather warnings out to vulnerable people is area. crucial if they are to protect themselves. The warnings are broadcast on television, local radio, and increasingly by mobile phone text message. In remote communities, local disaster management teams reach villagers in person. Simple steps swiftly taken, like getting livestock into sheltered areas and staying indoors, are life-saving. Hi, good day. The seasonal forecast for the coming summer season, rather a dry start to the summer Even season in the run-up to drought, disaster can be prevented. Shumani Mugheri is a meteorologist working with the agricultural community to mitigate the worst effects of drought before it happens. South African Weather Service. Have a good day and thank you very much. The most important strategies that we usually suggest to farmers is firstly to save as much water as possible through water harvesting and keeping water on earth dams, for example, as well as uh, planting short variety cultivars uh, and also drought resistant cultivars that can help them cope with the prevailing drought. In response to the very dry forecast, Patiswa Gwena decided to plant drought-resistant maize on her small holding in the Eastern Cape. This one is the ordinary seeds. As you can see, it is very short, but they were ploughed at the same day, same time. This one, also it was ploughed at the same day, at the same time. As you can see, it has grown up too much taller than the other one. So that is the difference. I am pleased because at least we'll be harvesting something at, at the harvesting period. On the other side of the world, the people of Bangladesh are vulnerable to natural disasters of a different kind. This densely populated country is also the world's largest delta. It's crisscrossed by over 300 rivers, vital communication routes, as well as a place to live, work and play in the crowded city. Flooding is a regular occurrence. It's caused both by the sheer volume of water during the monsoon season, but also by ferocious tropical cyclones which sweep in from the south. The Bangladesh Meteorological Department provides critical information on potential flooding and tropical cyclones to national disaster preparedness programs. Bangladesh is a land of disaster and most vulnerable area because of its uh, geographical location. Whenever a low pressure area forms over the Bay of Bengal, Bangladesh Meteorological Department uh, keeps continuous watch during this cyclone on a season. BMD issues the alert message uh, to the disaster management services and cyclone preparedness program. And this early warning, as well as the preparedness system, reduces the loss of the lives and the, uh, properties to a minimum one. 
As well as providing early warnings of extreme weather, national meteorological and hydrological services worldwide work together to plan flood protection strategies. Once Dhaka city itself was vulnerable to the flood, but uh, now it's not at all vulnerable. We have protected the, e the, the north and western side of uh, Dhaka city with this embankment. You can see the road as well as embankment over there. And we are going to uh, have another embankment uh, in uh, near future on the eastern side so that we can uh, protect the entire Dhaka city and we can increase the area of Dhaka city in this way. The huge rivers that surround Dhaka are full to overflowing during the monsoon season. Steep embankments contain the rivers, protecting the city and its people. Away from the city, the pace of life is slower. The villagers here live off the land and the water that surrounds them. But the coastal region and islands of the Bay of Bengal are particularly vulnerable to tropical cyclones. The storms create massive water surges which flood in over the low-lying delta, tearing away everything in their path. In the 1960s, a series of tropical storms killed over 50,000 people. In 1970, one of the worst cyclones on record took over 300,000 lives. The water surge leaves devastation behind. Livestock drowned, crops washed away. In the village of Patagata, the survivors remember the 1970 tragedy. Suddenly I could see the water surge coming towards us. It poured over the embankment. The houses were about to be swept away. Hurriedly we grabbed bundles of straw. The water was way over our heads. The straw floated in the water, and that's how all the families survived. Today, Simaroti is among thousands of villagers from the surrounding area who've come here to enjoy themselves and to learn. In this performance staged by the Cyclone Preparedness Programme, local people discover that the cyclone's lethal toll is not inevitable. Through dance and drama, they find out what they can do to be prepared for the cyclone's onslaught. The main aim of the reenactment is to encourage people to take refuge in safer places before the cyclone makes landfall. Since the 1970s, over 2,000 cyclone shelters have been built to withstand the force of the water. The drama is totally absorbing. Volunteers recruited from the local community have the task of warning and evacuating people at risk. Once they receive the early warning, the volunteers get to work. The villagers must all take shelter before the storm strikes. Station. Cyclone warnings issued by the Bangladesh Meteorological Department arrive here at the control room of the Cyclone Preparedness Program in Dakar, where they're broadcast to coastal areas. A massive force of over 300,000 volunteers immediately start evacuating communities at risk. It's dangerous work, but the volunteers take the job extremely seriously. They are the member of, of that community, so they are among the people. 
Many of them may lost uh, their, uh, their family members also. In 1970, there was a big cyclone. So many people lost at that time. All the members of the family lost. So this is a very sad experience of these people. And they are always remembering this. So any time cyclones comes, they feel this is their responsibility to save the people. This volunteer force, combined with accurate, timely meteorological information, has saved hundreds of thousands of lives. In the 1970 super cyclone, over 300,000 died. But in 1994, a cyclone of similar intensity took the lives of 200 people. We cannot just stop this cyclone, but we have to live with this. We have to take precaution. Previously, uh, the people uh, did not hear anybody that cyclone is coming and they are not leaving their houses and going to the, to the high, uh, safer places. But now, because of our volunteers' effort, the, the people are, are now they are listening to them and they are, they are now going to the safer places. The struggle to prepare for and mitigate the effects of natural disasters continues. The World Meteorological Organization brings together national meteorological and hydrological services worldwide, enabling them to share vital data and improving their ability to predict natural hazards. Through timely, accurate information provided by these services, communities can take action to prepare and protect themselves from the impact of extreme weather. For the people bearing the brunt of natural disasters, such action is life-saving. <laughs> the cost of preparedness and prevention, in both human and economic terms, is far less than the cost of picking up the pieces afterwards. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>